yesterday I told you the story of Fabi Grossi. This is a picture she sent me after having talked to her parents on how she became a victim of sexting. She looks relieved and ready to move forward with her education. Today I'm going to tell you another story. This is Adriana Mata. She's 18 years old. She just arrived to the city of Roraima. Roraima is in the northern eastern part of Brazil, 50 kilometers away from the frontier between Venezuela and Brazil. She got there on foot. She was forced to travel and leave her country behind because of the difficult situation that her country is, is going through in terms of politics and the economic situation. But she's going through a new challenge now. Moving into a new country is difficult for anyone. But today, there are many xenophobic sentiments racing and increasing in many countries in small towns. Getting to this story is part of how are we making efforts at Talk to You. This is a new story we are developing. Talk to You is a startup now, which is on its way to become a big corporation. We combine storytelling, chatbot technology that is already adapted to existing channels and artificial intelligence to create a tool for communication and behavioral change. The chatbot market size is set to be at $3 billion in the next five years. That's a tremendous amount of money and we are aiming for talk to you to be at the innovative end of that market size. How do we add value? We're able to construct and build flexible and adaptable conversations that are engaging audiences in teenagers to tell stories for social good. Our business model is a B2B model in which we work together with enterprises, companies, charities, and organizations to create stories for social good. We basically sell these stories, and then we also make money by adapting this to other contexts in different countries, and then also by charging a maintenance fee. The contracts that we are delivering are, have the virtue of signing a, a commitment that has the several um, commitment on us. We, we commit to constructing an outreach high outreach campaign that is able to communicate on one-on-one -on -one level with several youth to create stories for social impact that can change empathy for behavioral change. What are we doing in terms of data? Well, the chatbot receives millions of text lines that exports. We are able to analyze and work together with uh, algorithms and um, machine learning and text classification and word clouds that are able to uh, detect some of the most interest trends and topics that today are helping UNICEF to detect some insights on how youth behave on social networks. Um, in terms of uh, engagement, we've been able to work together and attract to our stories one million participants and one million users. This is equivalent to having the stadium of Rio de Janeiro called Maracana 12 times full, at full capacity. Um, some of the goals we have for 2019 are related to increasing the number of partners we work to and be able to construct five new stories. Our teams are committed to work in to terms of combining the storytelling and the technology to increase engagement rates. Today, our engagement rate is at 56%. This means that 56% of our participants are able to finish our stories. We want to be at 75% in two years. Last year, we had a revenue of $100,000. This year, we want to be at $300,000, tripling the, the amount of, of, of money that we're making. And our commitment is that if we are able to win the prize, we would like to dedicate most of that effort to engage those, to increase those engagement rates and be able to deliver better stories for our client and higher impact for those that are part of the next billion. Thank you.
Questions, questions from judges? Who would like to go first? Oops, sorry. I'm, I'm not entirely sure um, what the product is. When you say it's stories, you mean it's stories that your team writes or stories that the young people write? Today, it's stories that our team writes. So we have a team of script writers that we are, we are innovating in the way we construct these stories. So far, there hasn't been a way into which people can, or writers can create a story that works as a chat platform, as a conversation. We're getting into that development so that we can portray and feature those stories in chats and making the audience as a participant of that story. So today, that's, that's the point. And I think our ambition is that later in time, maybe we can reach a way in which we can have a platform that adds stories for people making them. So lots and lots of people are creating um, chatbots that tell stories. Right. And how long are your stories? Our stories are, the, our initial story was addressed to take part during, uh, let's say, 48 hour space. That was not continuously taking stories, but our messages were programmed at different parts of the day so that people had, had, had ways to interact and it would flow as any conversation would be. Like, over, you know, over 48 hours. Yeah, and today we are, the, the, some of the new stories that we are that we're getting because we want to increase engagement and we know mm -hmm. that that was a, a long story. We're shortening the time of the story to be able to deliver the message with more clarity in shorter terms. Because 56% engagement is not a great rate of engagement. So that means that only half a million users stayed until the end of the story, engaged with the product. Uh, yeah, but if you consider that the, ad, the ad's investment to get traffic into the story was $20,000 and still be able to reach participants at for 1 million with an engagement of 56%. That means that we attracted people in for $1 million at 0.2, at 2 cents of a cost. And, and I think the 56% for what we're gathering and other people's stories and other companies and we were bringing this, this development, people are relatively very surprised on how much the engagement rate is, especially compared to other solutions that are delivering now. Can you compare it to other solutions? What are you comparing it to? Um, at least today, for some organizations, chatbot technologies, are, they, they, are, they are not being used to them. They are not being used in the, in the market for some companies. Uh, for instance, um, UNICEF, Telefonica, and some of the mobile, mobile companies do want to send a message to their stakeholders, but are not using chatbot technology. They're using other sources or other channels. They're using um, campaigns on Instagram. They're using uh, somehow videos on YouTube. So not, com not comparing to the chatbot industry directly, but comparing to other alternative ways in which companies are putting their resources, talk to you is being more able to deliver and engage and get an outreach that is more and higher than, than they already had. In terms of chatbots companies, I think there are a few that there are many, that the industry is very high, but I think it's completely based and, and concentrated in the US market. And some of them we've been um, talking and, 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 and having meetings with people in media that are using this. Can you, not um, involving sometimes, can you bring it to a, yeah, an end? Please. They're not involving sometimes the use of, of stories related for social impact. They're, they're bringing media outlets, so they're, they're telling stories on the news, but not necessarily the time of stories for social impact that we want to pursue. Thank you very much. Talk to you. Thank you. We will just allow our judges a few seconds to gather their thoughts and make some notes uh, before we hear from the next company. Okay, let's move on now to the next company from Tanzania. Let's hear from Ubongo. Hi, everyone. I'm 
Amdurin, Chief Business Officer from Ubongo, the largest classroom in Africa. So there is an education crisis in Africa, and I know this, not just because numbers say that, but because I actually experienced it firsthand. So growing up in Rua, Tanzania, I went to a school that did not have enough classrooms, books, or teachers. And on top of that, the teaching was all based on rote memorization. So we were assessed based on what we could recite back at the teacher and not what we could actually whether we could actually comprehend the material. And so even though I spent a lot of my time in school, I was barely learning. Thankfully for me, even though I went to a village school where we would sit outside um, on Red Earth and, and, and use ticks to write. I, my life changed when I got the opportunity to study in the US. And so while I was there, it became clear to me that there was a huge quality gap between the education I was getting in the US and the one I got earlier on in Tanzania. And I thought it was such a huge injustice. So I moved back home to make sure that millions of kids in Africa get access to top quality education. So at Ubongo, we create localized, interactive, fun educational media that helps kids learn and love learning on whatever technologies that they have. And so we produce localized educational cartoons for three-year-olds all the way up to 14-year-olds teaching uh, math, science, uh, early literacy, numeracy, financial mm -hmm. literacy. We've, we even teach coding, we teach gender equality, and even life skills, because we do realize that it's important for these kids to develop character strengths, such as growth mindset, grit, resilience, to help them become successful in life. And it's no accident that they love this content because it's all based on uh, human-centered design. It's all kid-centric focused. And we bring kids into our office every week so that we can co-create with them. So what's happening is that we have 11 million um, kids learn with, with, us, with us every month monthly in six languages across 31 countries. And this is why I tell you, we have the largest classroom in Africa. And we are growing it to kids at last mile in non-electrified areas, in refugee camps, because those kids need it the most. And we're doing this with a growing network of distribution partners. And we've conducted a randomized control trial study uh, for show Achille and Me, which has shown that kids who watch um, Achille and Me actually have 12% higher school readiness scores than control groups, and actually outperform their peers by 24% in counting. And kids who watch Ubongo Kids, which is our STEM show for primary schoolers, um, actually improve significantly in math and science. And so we are more than just a cartoon show. We are a multi-platform learning resource that actually offers a variety of educational products, from e-books to books, SMS content, but also apps. We have Android apps on uh, Google Play Store. And um, we, are, we, are, we are basically bringing content to kids as technology continues to, to penetrate in Africa will continue to grow with them long term. And our content is highly versatile and adaptable, can actually be used for blended learning in the classroom and also be used for teacher training. So we generate revenue through B2B. We work with local and international development partners such as nonprofit organizations, the UNICEF of the world, uh, to co-produce content. And then we also license the content that we create and also make some money through advertising from sponsors and platforms such as YouTube. And we are positioned to scale our solution to reach even more kids. Um, how we are going to adapt our, uh, we are working actually on it now, to adapt our content into nine languages so that we can reach 30 million kids by 2022. And so we, 
want to equip Africa's next generation with education foundation, critical skills, and positive mindsets to change their lives and, um, the la like, uh, and that of their communities. And I believe that as we continue to do this at massive scale, we are changing a story for millions of kids in Africa like-minded. And we're actually setting them up to write a better story, not only for themselves, but someday for their children and their grandchildren too. Thank you. Questions from judges. Uh, uh, content um, is in, um, uh, it's in nine languages, you said? So it's uh, in six languages right now. now. Currently six yes. languages. Yes. Which ones? So Swahili, English, French. Uh, we've actually done Kikuyu and Luo, and uh, Kenya Rwanda. And we are working on Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, and Tree for Ghana, and uh, yeah, yeah. To make it a nine. Yes. It just remind me, the media you use to um, get this content to the kids. The media, so TV, radio, and mobile phones. So we are broadcasting on TV in all the 31 countries. We're also on radio, and uh, we have apps and also SMS content um, for, for mobile phones, yeah. This how, much, how much have you raised to date, and how much more are you looking to raise? Um, so, so far we've raised about $3 million, um, so we have enough money for the next two years, um, and most of this money is coming in in the form of grants. Your um, mission and your approach reminds me a lot of Sesame Street International. Yes. yes. Yeah. Are we you? actually partner with them a lot. And what do you do with them? How, do, how does that partnership work? So we've decided instead of competing, why not travel together? Mm -hmm. um, so actually in Tanzania, we are distributing their content alongside ours, mm -hmm. and we are looking for ways to um, collaborate in more, in more projects to reach even more kids, because they have a lot of um, expertise that we really want to tap, tap into. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we, we have a great relationship so far, so there's more to come. So they work as a nonprofit. Yes. Um, what makes you think that, that you're going to be able to monetize, or in fact, why monetize? Yeah, so we are also a nonprofit, actually. Um, yeah, we are also a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are still, like, we still see there's a lot of, of opportunity to monetize our product uh, long term. It's going to take a while because right now, a lot of parents. Uh, in Africa don't necessarily, um, you know, spend so much on education. But as technology continues to grow and as their um, spending continues to grow, we'll continue to see that money. But a lot of our money right now is coming from B2B. Mm -hmm. One thing that I've noticed <clears throat> in, a, in a number of African countries is the amount that parents are willing to pay for home tutors. Yes, yes. Even yeah. if they don't pay for private education, there's a tremendous num percentage of mm -hmm. families that have home tutors. Mm -hmm. And I wonder whether you think there's a way to improve home tutoring, which can be really iffy, um, through the yes. product. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, this, this content is definitely filling a lot of that gap. Like we've seen kids who are out of school because uh, we do screenings in schools and stuff, uh, they come back to school because now this is fun stuff. Their, their peers are telling them about it. Um, and, 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 and for the longest time, school, school has not been enjoyable for kids. So it's really bringing, attracting kids to, to this content, which makes parents very excited. Um, and what's been interesting is also seeing a lot of interest coming from the US, actually. Um, so that has really been interesting. We are getting a lot of our, our, our viewers, not only from Africa, but also the US and the UK. Yeah. Sorry if you mentioned this be before. Do you have uh, partnerships already with uh, TV broadcasters and, or radios? Yes, all over, all over Africa, in 31 countries. Uh, those are our main, main partners, distribution partners, as well as streaming platforms. So VOD platforms, 
Uh, we have, so our content is also online, but also on TV, but yeah, lots of distributors. Yeah. Thank you. Final questions? Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. A few seconds for judges voting. Okay, we'll move on to our next company, I think, um, is going to be Atta from India. Big round of applause, thank you. Uh, hi guys, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, we're a conversational chat app. You can learn English on our app. You can learn with uh, chatbots and you can learn by talking to live tutors who will actually correct your uh, English and help improve your fluency. So we're not a first time learning English learning app, language learning app. We're more for fluency improvement uh, to help with your employment and workplace skills and get promotions and get a salary hike and stuff like that. So um, I'm just going to, because we have like uh, very less time and uh, just a couple of slides, I'm going to run into some facts about our platform. We've been around for a couple of years and uh, last year has been all about traction for us. Uh, we have a very clear-cut uh, uh, profit and values approach. Uh, we're targeting the base of the pyramid. Uh, so we're a very affordable solution. In India, we're charging about uh, $3 uh, for a year of subscription um, with more pricing uh, options coming into the app. But because it's $3, we basically cater to at like almost the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, we support uh, 109 global uh, languages uh, for translation. Uh, that gives us a very good opportunity to actually go uh, to other markets, not just India. Um, we're a purely digital app. Uh, we don't have any physical presence or like, uh, you know, movable offline assets in the ecosystem. Uh, so scaling abroad or basically global domination is cheap and easy for us. Uh, this is what our growth chart looks like for the last year or so. Uh, we've grown about 10x in the last uh, 14 months, little more than uh, 12 months. Uh, we're trying to uh, reset the whole uh, global expectation that MOOCs is the only way to deliver uh, massively online uh, learning. Um, mobile phones and smartphones out there are way more powerful in the hands of far too many people uh, with uh, 4G and 5G networks getting democratized. Uh, rich media can reach a smartphone and uh, power learning for five minutes a day uh, for any user. Um, we're at about 300,000 uh, monthly active users right now. Uh, we're at about uh, 25,000 daily active users. We've got a 2% uh, paid conversion rate in India um, as of now on a daily basis. Uh, if you get 1,000 users, 20 of them pay every day. Uh, but the surprising fact is that other markets actually have a far higher paying potential. Uh, we've had experiments running in Myanmar, Bangladesh, Kuwait, and uh, Russia. And in Myanmar, we're actually getting close to 16 or 17% conversion every day. So that's a boatload of money. Uh, <laughs> but it's a small market. It's not a 1.2 billion customer market like India. So we're hoping to monetize the India use case, uh, maybe 10x this year. Uh, but I mean, let's see where that goes. So um, one of the key reasons our product works is because the uh, quality of uh, translations has drastically improved over the last couple of years. 
uh, Google, the Google Translate API has become so accurate from uh, just 12 months ago that people used to laugh at the translations of, like a um, year and a half ago. Right now, they actually praise the translations that are on our app. Uh, and this is about uh, eight or 10 predominant languages in India. So we've also built the functionality to integrate uh, local uh, translation APIs of every country uh, so that you know, we can offer better English learning services in that particular region. Um, about 100,000 of these 2 million users are uh, absolute below poverty line kind of uh, users. They're like uh, drivers and security guards and stuff like that. Uh, so we have a huge impact on these kind of guys. Uh, what is encouraging is to see that uh, even these guys whom we normally think of as non-smartphone guys or like uh, tech non-savvy, they also really like using the app. We've got uh, about six hours of engagement happening every month uh, for our paid users uh, without you know, forcing them or you know, coercing any other users to actually use the app. So that's very motivating for us. Um, we're trying to do a gifting program where uh, basically our, uh, our customers who have managed to learn for a couple of months on the app uh, get a lot of traction, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, get a lot of learning uh, from the app and therefore want to recommend it to a lot of friends of theirs. Uh, so we actually get these ambassador learners and uh, give them five or six activations uh, to distribute it amongst their family, to give it to their maids or to the house help and stuff like that uh, for free. So that's, that's one uh, channel we're working on this year. Um, moving on, uh, one, of the, one of the advantages that uh, we really have is the whole world is trying to move to chatbots for automation and scale. But we already have chatbots for the last uh, year and a half or a little longer than that. And we've realized that chatbots that are scripted by humans are very efficient at uh, keeping up the attention levels of learners. Uh, purely because they're scripted by humans. So the automation part of the chatbots is uh, something that we're looking at from the live tutoring perspective. So uh, data, we've got about, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, we've got about 25 million uh, interactions in the database already. Uh, we're doing close to um, uh, 10,000 live chat interactions on a daily basis with about uh, 20 tutors uh, on the platform on a daily basis concurrently. Uh, that generates a huge amount of correct, incorrect data for like sentence correction. And that, those suggestions are actually powered by an open source um, NLP engine that we're working on and goes back into the tutor app and they become suggestions for the tutor so that the tutors can spend lesser and lesser time uh, correcting learners, thereby increasing their productivity and efficiency. So uh, we're, we're one of the cheapest uh, tutoring platforms in the world today. Uh, Verblings and uh, VIP kids of the world are charging upwards of $25 an hour. Uh, we actually managed to do live tutoring at uh, $2 an hour. So that's the opportunity that we um, do business in because of the scale of Indian tutors. Um, we're uh, trying to, uh, so one of the main reasons uh, why learners pay us on the app is for improvement of their workplace skills or uh, basically being able to go for interviews and make a resume and very functional things. So uh, we're trying to link, th this is what we're gonna do uh, going forward. We're trying to build a resume on the blockchain, maybe um, coming years or so, uh, where hopefully there'll be a credible public profile of uh, you know, all the achievements that a learner is actually going through uh, on various platforms, uh, learning platforms available today, beginning with Utter, obviously. Uh, and that can then be exposed to employers who can actually verify the credibility or the um, degree of English fluency of any learner. Uh, that hopefully will lead to uh, more recruitment and career opportunities and connections that we can offer to the learners. So this is coming up, it's in the works, so I don't know where it's going, but hopefully we'll have it ready by the end of the year. Uh, we're targeting uh, a million dollars of revenue this year from seven million learners, uh, could be a mix of uh, Indian and uh, international learners. Um, but like I said, it doesn't cost us um, anything, in fact, to go to another market because the app uh, has a universal applicability. And uh, another payment option coming in is not just to subscribe for the app, is to actually pay for tutors who conduct lessons with the learner. So thereby, it's like an Uber model. So every time a tutor 
finishes a successful lesson with a the learner, they pay them a few cents, a dollar, or something like that. So that's going to be a pay-as-you-go kind of a model. Uh, that's hopefully going to bump up our revenue opportunities. Mm, if we win today, I mean, not today, tomorrow, hopefully. If we win tomorrow, part of the money that we're going to win, we're hoping to give as uh, subscriptions to uh, people who really need it in India. Uh, there are a lot of local communities we're hoping to work with that are very underprivileged and uh, don't have access to quality education. Classrooms are very far away in India and stuff like that. So hopefully we can give them free subscriptions and uh, get them on Utter, and that's what we plan to do. So thank you. Thanks very much, Asa. Questions from judges? So a lot of this um, sounds so much like Duolingo, except that Duolingo is free. And I'm wondering what your um, advantage is over something like Duolingo that has Duolingo text, Duolingo chat, and Duolingo live tutors. So uh, one of the main advantages that uh, we provide is uh, like the live learning actually comes from like uh, community-driven uh, uh, like use cases. So if there is a community of drivers, they'll be connected to like driver tutors or like driver employers or driver managers. Uh, if there's a community of just uh, people looking to graduate and like finish their last year of college, they'll be connected to tutors that are on only that uh, culturally relevant, only that section of uh, the user base. That's one main advantage that we have. Uh, another advantage that we have is actually the opportunity for global arbitrage. Uh, I don't know how your Duolingo is aggregating the tutors, but we have a multi-level marketing kind of a model to get tutors. And uh, these tutors keep changing every month or two months. And because they're like kids with like basically good English, they go through a rigorous onboarding program, we are able to offer the service at $2 an hour. And I don't know if uh, that kind of scale can come out of uh, you know, tutors who are present in the West. Uh, it's like the uh, outsourcing model that's so popular in India. We're able to do factory work at low cost. We know that there's a huge difference between good tutors and bad tutors, and I'm wondering whether for $2 an hour you're really able to onboard in a way that makes good tutors. Yeah, so, th so we're hoping that the 10,000 chats every day can lead to like suggestions that power the tutors to empower them to make them better, so we can bring about a standardization of uh, tutor quality, and uh, that's one of the core advantages we see. There's a company called Live Person that works with virtually every um, mobile provider in the world and that uses their chat conversations to power their live customer service Correct. agents. Correct. So it seems like a similar thing. Yeah. Um, is it the same model but transferred to education? Yeah, so, so here's the thing. They have a very captive audience that has very business-related queries. Whereas language learning is far more free-flowing and open in terms of the things that the learners can talk to the tutors. Uh, it could be something very personal. It could be something very uh, grammar-specific or like generic. So the customer service use case is probably this small, but the language learning use case is probably 10 times bigger. So uh, if we have enough conversations that can actually build uh, these suggestions for the tutors, uh, we're hoping everybody can become a tutor eventually. So it's a much larger use case than customer service. I hate to keep pushing you on this, but you, I told you beforehand I was going to. So two million conversations that are on any topic in the world really means probably around 10 conversations per topic. And that's not enough to learn on. No, it's 10,000 conversations a day. I know, but you've just told us that it's open-ended, that they can talk about anything. Right. So if you actually look at per topic, you've probably got around 10 conversations per topic because you've just told us that the strength of this is that they can talk about anything in the world. And right. that's the problem, sparsity of data, because it's open-ended and not driven top-down by a grammar. No, it's open-ended in terms of language learning, but the topics are defined by us. The topics are related to grammar and sentence construction. But we also have a section where there are trending topics from like Twitter and stuff like that where these open-ended conversations, you can have a million of them in a day, provided we are maybe at uh, 10 million MAU or something like that. So a day's worth of data gives us enough uh, corpus to actually create suggestions for those topics. And 
the, the speed at which we get there is hopefully going to be the main differentiator from uh, platforms like Duolingo and stuff. Tell does us that, about... Does that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> Tell us about your consumer acquisition strategy. How do you... How do you get to those seven million? How do you get faster? Uh, how do you grow bigger? So, our, um, because we because we work in a very uh, wide area of uh, learning, which is just language learning or English learning, our um, acquisition cost of users is very very cheap. I mean, it's probably the cheapest in the world. Uh, we get Facebook installs for the app at around uh, one rupee odd um, um, uh, for for a user. So uh, scaling to about a million users is a matter of about uh, $8,000 or $9,000. So getting the users in is a very low cost affair, but keeping them engaged and therefore making them pay is the, more, uh, is the larger challenge. Uh, I know traffic is uh, cheap in India right now. It's not cheap everywhere else in the world, but uh, one thing that really uh, signals, uh, that's a really positive signal for us is, uh, we have about 30 to 35 percent of our daily traffic from pure organic sources. So people on YouTube who are like tech reviewers and they have like the small 100,000 subscriber communities and stuff like that, they actually review our app saying like, oh, this is the best learning app that you can find out there. And that brings us a lot of organic traffic that we don't pay for. And can the conversion is much higher. answer to a cl closure, please? Yeah, so traffic is cheap and a large percentage is organic. That's why we're able to grow Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Atta. And finally, well, we will now do a couple of seconds for judging. Okay, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, let's now, oops, sorry, I dropped something. Let's now hear from South Africa, Zelda. Uh, everyone, uh, I don't have slides, so you'll just have to look at my face for now. I'm sorry about that. Um, so, Zelda provides free online career guidance to high school students and matches them to scholarships for tertiary opportunities. I live in Cape Town, which is the most unequal city in South Africa, which is the most unequal country in the world. In fact, seven of the most unequal countries are African. And a tertiary education, whether that be a university degree or a diploma or some kind of training, is, the best, is still one of the best ways for an African young person to escape from poverty. But the unfortunate tr truth is that of the 10 million African students finishing high school every year, 90% of those will end up without any kind of qualification. Our mission at Zelda is simple. We want to provide access to the tools and information that students need to unlock their true potential. We know that because the majority of African students are accessing, uh, can only access the internet through mobile, our approach from the very beginning has been to develop our platform specifically for students using low data, low end mobile devices. Our platform provides access to a series of personality assessments that are combined with machine learning so that they can actually understand themselves better and make better choices about their education. We also provide access to basic content so that they can prepare for and cope while pursuing tertiary studies. And then finally and most importantly, we provide them with access to a curated list of scholarships that are specifically matched to their own personality and interests. We're effectively trying to take what's an expensive service, like using a, a career guidance counselor or a, psych a psychometric uh, assessor, something that could cost hundreds of dollars, and make that scalable and accessible to students around the continent. 
So Zelda remains free for students forever. So how do we make money? Well, the international scholarship market is massive. In fact, in South Africa alone, over a billion dollars are spent every year on, uh, on university scholarships. What we've found, though, is that these, these organizations providing scholarships face two major problems. They can't reach the students that need their help the most, those who are in rural areas. They also can't manage the application processes from all these students. So our software as a service platform allows these organizations to tap into our student database so they can reach the students who really need the support to go to university, and they can manage their entire application process through a convenient online platform. It's all for as little as $8 a student for these organizations. We've also recently launched a central scholarship application form, so students can fill out one form and apply for multiple scholarships at the same time. In fact, since launching that just two months ago, we've already had over 1,000 new applications. So, and that's just part of our kind of early traction. In order to reach more students, we've partnered with a number of different local organizations in South Africa, including not just uh, social media influencers that are linked to universities, but also local ed tech startups that are looking for new opportunities for their students once they finish high school, and even local government so that we can reach into schools uh, within South Africa. We've also recently partnered with NASPERS, the local tech giant in South Africa, for a $30,000 a year contract so that we can actually help match their students in youth cafes to entry-level job positions. Last year, we were lucky enough to be joined by a group of angel investors who invested uh, a total of $120,000 in our company because they believe in us as a group of young, scrappy engineers who are trying to solve the problems that we faced at university. We also have amazing advisors, including the likes of the ex-vice chancellor of the University of Cape Town. Africa is, as a continent, has the youngest and fastest growing population in the world. It is the home to the next billion. All these people have joined us because they believe in our vision of a democratized education, where your opportunity isn't determined by your circumstance, where you were born, who you are, but by your choice and your own abilities. Please join us on that journey. Thank you. Questions from judges. So you have a tough story here because yeah. you're the only one dealing with higher education. Yeah. And we've heard for several days now how few kids actually make it through elementary education, how few kids are actually even going to be able to be your customers. So why is this the market that you're looking at? Why are you looking at higher education? And It's a good question. So I was, to answer that, I was part of, I was at the University of Cape Town during the Fismas Fall protests where South African students around the country were saying, we need free higher education. It's a human right for our country. Students deserve to get um, tertiary education. Even being in that protest movement um, and working both with the faculty and with the students themselves, I was a firm believer of the fact that if the government can afford to provide for higher education, they shouldn't pay for that. They should be paying for early childhood development before they even pay for primary, before they pay for high school. I'm a firm believer that ECD is the first place to start. That's not where my experience lies, though. And our, us as a team, we had to play to what our strengths are. There are organizations that work with ECD and primary. What we are good at and what we understand is the university and high school market. And that's, the, that's where we decided to focus for now. So that's what we're trying to solve. So what percentage of the population is going to get far enough to be able to use your product? And what percentage of that population is low socioeconomic status, because that's the next billion. Yeah. So obviously it's different in each African country. Uh, we know South Africa the best, so we know that 600,000 students finish high school every year in South Africa, um, and only a tenth of those will actually get some, some kind of qualification. There's a 50% dropout rate in, in South Africa, um, and that's in any kind of tertiary, tertiary qualification, so that's what we're trying to focus on. Any other questions? Now, now you are scaling in South Africa. Mm. Are you planning to scale uh, in sub-Saharan Africa or elsewhere in the world? Um, so what we have found is what we're lucky enough to be offering is actually access to more opportunities for education. So we've managed to cut down our acquisition costs per user just through kind of social media marketing and through influencers, cut it down to about 20 US cents per student. And that comes with a, a value of um, almost $20 per student at the moment. Um, in terms of actually scaling across the rest of the continent, 
We're looking at the best way for us, we believe, is partnerships. That's partly why we're here as well, is to speak to the other ed tech startups that are here. I mean, for instance, Ubongo has 11 million daily active users or monthly active users. Partnerships with those kinds of organizations, we believe, is the best way forward to getting into the rest of the continent. Okay. Quick, sorry, Any quick, final um, questions? Yeah. Last one, last one. I know you mentioned it, but I didn't fully get it. Can sure. you explain me again uh, your, re your revenue streams? Oh, yeah, sure. You talked about uh, organizations providing scholarships being mm. one of the sources, but is yeah. there any other, like universities or any other one is... Yeah, so we, we've explored a number of different uh, potential models. We know that private universities are often looking for kind of leads for their own, for paying students. Paying students are not the kind of students we're targeting, which is why we haven't decided to focus on that. What we know is that, uh, so for instance, most of the scholarships in South Africa are private companies who are looking to hire the students that they put through university. So they actually pay a premium price to get students, to find the right students for their programs, uh, for their scholarship programs. Um, we've also got an MOU it's, I mean, it's just an MOU at the moment, which is why I didn't mention it, but with one of the major banks in South Africa um, in terms of lead generation with them as well, because students who are going to university are upwardly mobile students, most likely going to be high-value uh, high banking customers in the future. So we've got an MOU with them so that every student that we get through a scholarship program that opens up a bank account with them, we also generate revenue through the bank. So there are a number of different channels. Um, for us, we believe that the, the easiest channel at this stage is helping uh, scholarship programs manage their processes and actually generate leads. To, is it for scholarships only or people that wanted to really understand their career path, they can use the, the tool as well and get? That's, that's for free for students. So students okay. can do that if they want to, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Zelda. Yeah.